One, not that I wrote myself, but I, I came across um, an old Chinese story, an old Chinese legend. I think I told it that week as well. And it's the legend of a man called the Great Yu. Sorry. Great Yu or Yu? Yu. Why Yu? Oh. Comfortable? Not particularly. <laughs> 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 Do you want to get comfortable? That's what I'm Okay. So the legend of the great you. So, this is a very old legend. This is thousands of years old. It's like 4,000 years old. And it's China. So it's before China, the nation, ever existed. There's lots of little warring tribes. And the ones I'm talking about are on the banks of the Yellow River. So the Yellow River is China's great pride. It's a beautiful river, travels through plains and forests. It's a wonderful sight to behold, very life-giving. Fish, water for you to wash in and drink. And that's why these tribes live beside it. So you, at the beginning of our story, is a very young man. And his father, Gun, has been given a task. He's been given the task of taming the Yellow River. So. Their tribe and the neighbouring tribes kind of have a, a peaceful alliance going on. It's fairly loose. <coughs> under a man they call Emperor Yao. Emperor Yao has said, Dear Gun, the Yellow River, wonderful life giver, as it is, beautiful thing to live beside, every now and then it picks up. When the rains come and the lightning and the thunder, so the water comes like a pack of wild horses. It can carry away your home, your crops, your family. Now, it might not be very often, but what I need you to do, Gun, is tame this river. I need you to stop it from happening so that we can live peace and stability here. Now, Gun was very honoured by the task. The emperor said, you know, don't worry about farming, don't worry about feeding your family, you know, just focus on this one thing. You know, I trust you, you're a smart man. Gunn set about his task. He's a bit of an engineer. So he set about building lots of dams. Bigger and bigger dams he used. All kinds of mud he'd use. Wooden frames. He tried all kinds of things. But dam after dam kept falling to the Yellow River. The waters always grew too angry, too strong, and pushed over his dams and caused havoc. Now, our Emperor Yao, he was a patient man, but time had come for a new emperor, Emperor Shun. And he was not quite as patient, and he was a little bit nervy, and he wanted to prove himself. So he said, Gun, I am banishing you for your failure. After seven years, you must leave. You are in exile. The task shall pass to your son, you. Now you, by this time, he just got married. His wife had just got pregnant. But you was desperate to reclaim the family name, to prove himself. And as many other Chinese people have, it might sound a little bit strange to us, but he said, well, I'm gonna dedicate myself to this task so much, to, to prove my dedication, I am not going to go back home until I've done it. And they say that in the time that he was away from home, he passed his door three times. And the first time his pregnant wife called out to him and he walked by. And the second time he heard her cries of labour and he walked by. And the third time his son was old enough to call out for his father and yet he walked by. Now Yu's approach was a little bit different to Gunn's. He admired his father, but he knew that something had to be a little bit different. So he said, Emperor Shun, uh, you're just going to have to give me a bit of time. I know it looks like I'm not doing very much, but I'm just going to be walking up and down the river for a while. And I think in the end, that's the best thing to do. So he spent a couple of years just walking, just walking up and down the river, till it became a bit like an old friend a good companion, someone he knew very well. 
And after a couple of years, he came back to Emperor Shum. He said, look, I think I've figured it out. When you block the river up, it gets more angry. When it's narrowed, when it's restricted, it gets stronger, more powerful. When you give it space, when it has room to flow, it becomes peaceful. So the plan is not dams, not dikes, but channels. We will cut channels with gates, and when the waters come, we lift the gates, and the water will flow into the channels. But there's a bit of a problem. We're going to need a lot of people to do this. Hundreds of people. And our tribe and our friends, we can't afford to do this alone. We're going to need the help of even more people. Emperor Shan immediately offered him an army with which to go forth and subdue their neighbours. But you said no. Just give me one assistant and I will do this. You trusted me to walk the river. Trust me again. Now. Well, Emperor Shum was a bit surprised. But he was very impressed. So he said, very well. Your family name at stake. I shall trust you. Go forth. So, he walked to the border of their most ferocious enemy. And he asked his assistant, you, know, you might want to stay behind here. <laughs> Catch up with me in a bit. I'll be all right. And he walked on alone, unarmed, to enemy territory. Now he was seen, and he was captured, and they shouted and they screamed at him, and then they beat him, punched him, hurt him. But what they found was that you did not resist. You just sat there soft, no anger, no aggression, no resistance. So after a couple of blows, they're thinking, this is a bit weird. I don't really feel right beating up a man who's not resisting. Odd stuff. What are you doing here? What do you want? He said, take me to your leader. I wish to speak with him. After seeing this strange act of you, they said, very well, we'll take, we'll take you to our leader. And they told their leader their story. And you told their leader about his plan to cut the channels, to make peace with the river. And the leader saw the scars, the cuts, the marks on you's face and his body. And he said, yes. I think if he is willing to endure this, then I'll trust this man and his plan. Their union inspired yet more unions, until hundreds of men were working under you. For years they were cutting channels beside the river. And you himself, he became old. And they say that his hands grew huge from being wet all the time, and his feet grew huge, like trench foot. <laughs> and he became <laughs> bent over and crippled working harder than anybody else. And after a few years, a familiar sound came. The sound of the thunder and of the lightning. The sound like a pack of horses. They knew the waters were coming, and they waited all night. But eventually they came. A great torrent came rushing down from the valley. They lifted the gates, and the water dispersed. You had tamed the Yellow River. The crops were saved, the houses were saved, the people were saved, and Emperor Shun was very impressed. And so were all of the other tribal leaders. In fact, they were so impressed that Shun gave up his throne and he gave it to you. You was made emperor and he oversaw years of agricultural development. And eventually, when he passed his throne to his son, he began a dynasty the Jean dynasty. And so to the boy that he had ignored and passed by when he was so dedicated to his task, he gave a new empire. Mm. Yes. Mm. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you. you need to ask Lee. <laughs> mm. I did ask her when I was did here, you? actually, a little bit about it, yeah. And um, yeah, she was kind of familiar with it. There's okay. a there's a few people called you, uh, and you actually means uh, stupid sometimes, oh. great stupid. Um, so she thought it was one great story. stupid. <laughs> but it, uh, yeah, but there are some statues of this man around China, hmm. because they really aspire to 
uh, yeah, people who can work with the water. You know. But there's, there's kind of um, some Taoist principles in there, and mm -hmm. that you, in, in submitting, in non resisting, mm -hmm. then you kind of, that's a better way to approach your problem. Yeah. And observation. Yeah, yeah. Observation. Patience. 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 Yeah. Mm. Night no, family. Yeah. Yeah. It's good because it's like, it feels to me like. Uh, yeah, but... Hey. Hmm? Yeah, we didn't hate him another way, did. It's not the other river. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I <coughs> I like the I like the idea that an environmental problem, really in Schumacher, mm. is the impetus for like a union of people. Mm. Yeah. It's not a problem. It's actually like <coughs> an inspiration. Mm. Yeah. That's nice. I like that. How are you finding now that you're getting the opportunity to? shape these stories a bit more and get to know them and live in them. How am I finding it? Yeah, be retelling them. Yeah, that was good. That was like, I've never told that story like I did just now. Mm. Because I, I, I did loads of research. So mm. actually, when I, the first couple of times I told it, I just kind of, I wasn't imagining things. I was like recalling bits of information mm. and trying mm. to piece them together. Um, so I've been trying to get away from that mm. every time. So their stories kind of carry a hallmarks of their mm. origin. Yeah. Like I think <coughs> the first story might carry some of the nerves that I carried the first time I told it. Mm. I mean, there's yeah. Mm. It brings me back to like <laughs> standing yeah. in front of people, like sixty people in front of a sign, like wondering what the hell am I doing? Mm. 